0900, finished cleaning my classrooms in the horseshoe and set up the multi-purpose room for lunch. 0915, ex decided to fix two each toilet vacuum breakers in the upstairs female bathrooms rather than clean gymnasium's floor for volleyball games and utilizing late start time with empty female bathrooms. 0930, procured maintenance cart and all required parts to complete vacuum breakers. 0950, completed first vacuum breaker moving to second one. 1007, while tightening second vacuum breaker plumbing, I hear two pops followed by three to four more pops with a brief pause. I immediately think that a young kid has brought a pack of black cat fireworks into my school and lit them off. Following this, I think that maybe the science teacher has exploded something in his classroom. Immediately following this, there is another burst of three to five pops followed by a young girl screaming. 1008. I immediately stand and exit the stall and the female's bathroom with only a Leatherman in my hand open to the regular screwdriver. Upon entering the hallway, I immediately come eye to eye with Caleb Sharp, standing approximately 10 feet away from me on the opposite side of the hallway nearest the blue gymnasium. I immediately survey the scenario, looking at Caleb with a dark Carhartt stocking hat, black coat, blue jeans, and no expression, just a blank stare. Again at 10.08, I immediately survey the scenario looking down the hallway towards the screaming girl and notice white powdery smoke encompassing the entire hallway like an IED had just went off. A female body nearest the right side of the hallway, nearly halfway down, with a young girl knelt beside her side screaming. At this moment, I thought, who had scheduled a matchup without telling, mock-up, sorry, without telling me? About three quarters of the way down near the left side of the hallway lied another body perpendicular to me with a twisted backward leg towards its head irregularly. At that moment, I then knew that this was in fact shooting. 10.09, I immediately point my Leatherman at Caleb Sharp and say, get on the ground. Caleb just stares at me. I again immediately point my Leatherman at Caleb Sharp and say, get on the effing ground right now. Caleb now looks at me and removes his black stocking hat with his right hand, dropping it to the right on the floor, exposing his freshly shaved head, followed by raising both hands in the air, saying, okay, and going down on the ground. I approach Caleb from the side as I was trained to do and put my right knee into his back between his shoulder blades and my left hand holding my Leatherman to the back of his neck, his neck area, saying, don't you effing move in an effort to subdue him from further violence. Immediately thinking, does this kid have any more hidden weapons on him? Does this kid have another shooter I need to worry about? Is this kid going to resist me, causing me to have to hurt him? At that moment, I look up to see the science teacher, Mr. Hayes, out of his room helping the injured girl on the ground. Shortly thereafter, followed by the PE teacher, Mr. Carolyn, coming down the hall towards me. The PE teacher came to me and asked, are you okay? I asked him, what the hell is going on, still in disbelief. He said, I don't know, and again asked, are you okay? I replied, I guess so, and he left somewhere. While detaining the said shooting suspect, I noted that Mr. Hayes was now attending, excuse me, assisting the injured girl laying in the hallway, while also calming another younger girl sitting at her side, stopping their screaming. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Carolyn approached me with Mr. Hayes yelling for someone to call 911, saying, someone call 911, she needs help. I offered my cell phone to Mr. Carolyn to use, but he turned around and left in the opposite direction to find a landline. Several minutes later, I spotted Sheriff, or Deputy Sheriff Ron Nye approaching from the South Hall entrance with his weapon drawn. Deputy Nye yelled my name from the entrance and I responded, I have him, come on. I have the shooter. Deputy and I approached from the side asking what I had. Again, I responded, this is the shooter, please cuff him. Deputy and I immediately took out his handcuffs and secured them on Caleb Sharp's wrists, followed by taking over for me who was detaining Caleb Sharp. I immediately stood up and proceeded down the hall towards Mr. Hayes and the injured slash deceased students 
when I verbalized seeing a pistol laying on the ground near the wounded girl um, and Mr. Hayes in the hallway. Mr. Hayes responded back to me that there is a rifle in my classroom. I asked what and where. Mr. Hayes said in my classroom with my students while pointing towards his door. I entered Mr. Hayes classroom number 212 immediately seeing an AR-15 lying across the floor entrance with students clinging to the walls in panic. I at that moment decided to secure the weapons from any future use but with the thoughts that one I do not want to be mistaken as the shooter to any responding officers and two I do not want to degrade any needed existing fingerprints on the weapons or place my prints on the weapons. I decided at that moment to utilize my Leatherman tool opened up placing the handles through the AR-15 stock opening as a means of proving or excuse me moving the weapon out of Mr. Hayes room. Upon entering the hallway with both weapons near me I announced verbally I have the weapons secured with Deputy Nye responding Joe bring the weapons to me. I carried the AR-15 with my Leatherman tool and gently pushed the pistol with my foot down the hall towards Deputy Nye. By the time I approached Deputy Nye, the second responding deputy sheriff, Brian Lawler, approached from the south end of the hall entrance. Deputy Lawler immediately took over custody of Caleb Sharp from Deputy Nye. When Deputy Nye stood up, he responded, Give me the weapons, Joe. I immediately gave possession of the AR-15 to Deputy Nye, with him also picking up the pistol from the floor. Deputy Lawler responded, Did anyone clear the weapons? with Deputy and I responding back, no, I am going to take them down. Deputy Lawler responded, no, give them to me. Deputy and I immediately gave possession of the AR-15 to Deputy Lawler. Deputy Lawler cleared the AR-15 and removed the magazine, seeing that it was completely loaded full of rounds. Deputy Lawler immediately responded, oh my effing God, while looking down at Caleb Sharp. Now that I didn't have to worry about the shooter or his weapons being used by anyone else, I decided to proceed north down the hall towards the victims. I approached Mr. Hayes, noticing he had shot, um, he had the, one of the shot victims, Gracie Jensen, calm and bleeding somewhat under control. Next, I asked Mr. Hayes about the victim just beyond him, Samuel Strahan, with him simply shaking his head and saying he didn't make it. I approached Sam, noticing his leg bent backward unnaturally, kind of in a fetal position. Sam had blood running out of his mouth and abdomen, and a bullet entrance hole near his eye. Sam's face was twitching, and for a moment I thought he might still be alive, but I immediately realized it was just muscle spasms, and he was in fact deceased. That's when we heard of another shot victim, Jordan Goldsmith, in Mrs. Fry's science room, number 213. She had several people helping her and kept saying, it hurts, it hurts. At that moment, EMS entered the scene to assist with the injured students. Next, I heard another classroom open, um, Mr. Jessett's math room, number 205, with someone yelling, we have another shot person in here. Upon entering, I saw Emma Neese near the teacher's desk with a student holding tape and putting pressure over her wounds. EMS took over all three girls' life support and transported them to the hospital. The remainder of my shift entailed me following several groups of law enforcement, opening doors throughout the high school in an effort to clear the building from any further threats. After the events took place, Mr. Sharp looked at me with a blank stare on his face. He showed no remorse, no reaction, no emotion for what he had just done. Due to this, it is apparent that there was a great deal of forethought put into this. He took time to select the weapons of choice, gather ammunition, pack the bag, and plan his entry into the school where no one would see him. He even went as far as to cut his own hair while concealing it with a hat to get into the school. This was apparent to me when he removed his stocking hat, exposing his shaved head that was patchy and uneven. The only word he muttered to me was okay, while never breaking his blank stare. Why would someone do these actions and in the end, just have a blank stare? He took a fellow classmate's life, left three other classmates with permanent scars and countless others with emotional scars and mental scars that will never heal. 
In closing, the staff, students, and community of Freeman are always going to be scarred from the damage that Mr. Sharp has done. It is my belief there is nothing that can undo what has been done, and there is no sentence that can be issued to outweigh the damage that has been inflicted on this community. Mr. Sharp has single-handedly destroyed any sense of safety and security amongst the students and staff of Freeman High School. Thank you. Joe H. Bowen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor.